In these demonstrations, we are showing how to make an illustration of a person's expression. So this expression is joy and the other one is anxiety. So we start this one on the left here by using very simple geometric shapes. It's, this is a technique to learn drawing, but also a technique I like to use in illustration where we simplify our photographic reference into the most basic geometric form that we can find it without losing the, the uh, reference too much. We want to still capture the essence of the picture, but create this simplified form. Here we're covering the, the drawing with our base color, a kind of a flesh tint which I intend to use as a unifying under, undertone. We always do that with a painting, don't work on the white paper. And then her color of her hair, and we sort of emphasize the cheeks. That's a kind of an illustrative idea which I've borrowed from other illustrators. I thought I would try it out. And we separate each feature of the face into simple geometric colors and fill them in with its own color. Not too much gradation or things like that. Just a basic color for each area. So this is the first couple of areas that we've filled in now. Just a one color for what she's wearing. Try to, try to use a color that, that contrasts with the rest of her face there. So the, the gray color makes her face stand out a little bit more. The colors look a bit brighter, but as they dry, they get a little bit more muted. Um, I had a problem with the lighting here, which in the next video where I do the other face, it looks a lot better just arranging the lighting. So sorry about that. Here we now have got the base colors and we start adding in the dark tones and I put in quite a strong outline to actually delineate each shape that we worked out in advance. This emphasizes the flatness of the plane and also clarifies the illustration technique that I'm using here. Here we have the final product where the lighting was a little bit better, each area filled in. With the second part, I've started a drawing here which doesn't reproduce well there, so I just fast forward to the finished drawing part here where I've used the same principle, basically simplifying the reference down to very basic, simple geometric shapes. And now we are going to cover that with our underdrawing. So here's a totally different expression. The whole idea is that they are completely different in every way possible. So she is satisfied and smiling and he is biting his nails in uh, anxiety. So what was different with this technique is I did the heavy outline first. And um, so instead of breaking the face down into planes, sort of air, geometric areas of the face, I started working into the face areas with areas of color, lighter and darker, as you can see I'm doing here, which I didn't do in the previous one. And I think it, it was something that I saw in the reference that I wanted to do. Sometimes a picture just seems to be more interesting if you add more to it you know so here I'm adding in the light tones on top of the dark areas so I, I usually start with the middle tone work towards a light tone and then add in the dark tones and I'll show you that in a minute here so I'm adding in some lighter tones now some of them on top of the darker tones which just adds an element of subtlety to the color range of the face but still trying to keep it into relatively simple flat areas of tones and colors as you can see here you can see each separate area of color and um, so now what I've done is I've got a dark brush and I'm just starting to rework in some dark areas that got a bit obscured with that last layer so I'm just strengthening them up a little bit here so you can see them more clearly starting to put the basic color of his shirt so there once again I just um, I had the color of the shirt in his reference but I thought 
what would clearly re um, contrast with the skin tone and this sort of bluish gray color looked just great so I stuck with that um, don't always copy the photograph sometimes you the color that the person is wearing is not suitable you have to change it a little bit so usually I, I, I use the, the reference quite well, quite accurately I should say and um, but I would change the color if I needed to emphasize so the heavy outline part I put on the, the next stage now not I don't always use black sometimes I use a dark blue or a purple even so here yeah, I've basically done with the face and I'm starting to put in a pattern in the shirt which I, I, I wasn't sure about so it's a simplification of the reference that I had and um, I thought I would try it out with some of these detailing that I saw in the shirt and as it so happens it worked out rather well so we have them together here you can see they're two contrasting styles and um, not exactly painted in the same way there's more definition and form with the second one which from my own perspective I think works a little bit better <laughs> 